Hey guys, welcome. We are now at episode seven. So thank you for joining us. And today's episode, we are going to talk about how the Grimm's BAC and AMT prepare for the influx of visitors. Summer season. Yes, summer season. And this is summer season 2024, which we're expecting to be our busiest summer ever. Every year it goes like that. Yes. Yeah. So Charlie, what does BAC have to do to get ready for summer season? DOTs, we have to get all the vehicles changed over from winter tires to summer tires, get everything kind of just a whole swap over from what the winter season looks like to the summer season. So it's just a magnitude of sweeping the parking lots and get everything cleaned up and getting ready for all of the extra new hires that we have coming on. Um, we'll probably be onboarding in what, another 75, 80 employees this summer for the summer yes, season. Yes, probably. And, uh, you know, uniforms, getting everything just cleaned up, getting the yard cleaned up and getting everything prepped. It's a, it's a, you know, everything kind of, a lot of our stuff sits dormant during the winter time and a lot of it gets used, but we have to re-clean it back up and lots of waxing to be done for the summer season. And we're right in the middle of the season. Shoot, we've already got half of our fleet already changed over from the studded tires yep. and we're doing really good. I think we're above schedule this year. Sweeping's going to be done this week. So that's nice too. We'll get everything swept and dust, hopefully dust more dust free. So what I see as we prepare, I mean, really, I kind of look at June 1 is that day where we're off to the races. I know that tour, or I know that cruise ships come in before June 1, but I feel like that's really the, that's the, where we just like are off. Yeah, I think we're more full speed at that time. I think that we, you know, we're right now, I mean, shoot, we already have trips going to Homer and down to Kenai yeah. and we have trips going up to Fairbanks. And so we have a lot of different things going on right now, but yes, it, it, it gets a lot more busier. I mean, we'll be averaging 350 to 400, 400 trips a day uh, during the peak of the season. So, yep. and a lot of this stuff is already on our books for the summer. I mean, pretty much uh, the way tourism works in, especially as people are coming to Anchorage is they're, they're booking far in advance. Alaska really is a bucket list destination. Yeah. It's moved up on the bucket list. I mean, between all the controversy and everything that we have going on with the overseas and everything else going on right now, I, we've really moved up the calendar for a lot of people. So it used to be a lot, an older generation who want to come up here and that's why they called it the bucket list. But now we have people down in their mid forties and going all the way up that are, <clears throat> it has advanced their bucket list. They're, they're coming here a little earlier just because places they normally want to go with their families and things like that are, are just, you know, a little bit of questionable of, uh, if it's safe to go some of these places now. So anyways, it's nice that we're having a lot more interstate in state, uh, coming in. So for our customers, uh, that are getting transported, it's usually either a group transportation where it's some sort of an incentive planned three or four day big event with a business or it's a destination manager that is like managing an actual tour group. And so is there any others that you can think of? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, just big groups going down to Seward and you have your uh, you definitely have your groups like the fishing groups that we take care of and all the different yep. ones that we take care of and the getting canneries. them back. Yeah. The canneries, getting them down to Valdez and all the transports for them. They're coming in town and getting their J one visas and getting their social security cards and the pickups from the airports, the FBOs. I mean, it just keeps going. And then we have so much military exercise coming in that's yeah. coming here to do exercises. So we have all the military groups that are coming in and picking them up and taking them to and from hotels to the airport, to tarmacs, to. And then that we also have, training exercises that happen within the airlines. And so then we're taking them from one building to another building and getting their people picked up at the airport and taken to hotels. So it's really, it's not just this visitor mom and dad and their two kids or grandma and grandpa taking a grandchildren or a couple coming. It's, it's like this wide variety of business that happens here. It's a wide net. And, you know, we help the state, like uh, even the airport, you know, they have to recertify their firefighters every year for our aircraft, aircraft rescue firefighting. So we've gone in with the state and taken those, all the firefighters and police officers down to their training school down in uh, Kenai and take those guys also. Mm -hmm. So there's a, just a reoccurring of different businesses and levels that come up that, uh, that needs transport. And we just, you know, they, that's why in our world, you know, our, our corporate is really probably much bigger than our tourism. They're both big, but tourism is really big during the summertime. And then it kind of dives down in the wintertime or right? until we of course have Verande and we have Iditarod and some special functions and events up here. Yeah. You know, and when I think of corporate, it kind of that, that individual tour that's going down to Seward, that 
actually is kind of a little bit of corporate for us because if a destination management company or agency is behind that, then they are really our client that we're managing their client. Yeah. I mean, so, it's our partnership. And the, and the fishing trips that we take down, I mean, you get all these different ones that are here in town that do incentive fishing trips for their employees and things like that. So we pick them up early in the morning so they can maybe have a, a road soda or two on the way down and get some food. And then they're leaving at three in the morning to be down there by six in the morning and finish fishing at 12 and yeah. finally get their fish packed at two o'clock and they're dead. They're, they're ready Eat. to take a nap on the way back. So yep. then we have a nice comfortable coach or a bus for them or SUVs or vans, whatever they want to go down and makes it real nice and simple for them. So. They don't have to worry about the uh, the hustle and bustle of getting everybody there. Plus, we know that we're rounding up everybody, so they don't have to go chase them. Yeah, and and it's like the dignitaries and um, the political um, individuals that come up, they usually don't come up in the dead of winter. No. So th- then we're hosting like this other sp- space of people that are back. It's almost like this, this idea of leisure where it's part business and then there's a little bit of leisure. In, well, inside that coming all the way to Alaska, you know, and you, you have a trip up here, you want to get a couple of days of fishing yeah. in or you want to go see some of the wildlife or just see the views here. I mean, it just, it's incredible. So, you know, we get a lot of our vendors, uh, for, um, MCI, Volvo, everything, uh, that comes up here, Prevost that comes up here that want to come here and do their site visits during the summertime and help us with our vehicles, which is great because that's the busiest time we are. But of course they want to get a day of fishing or go see some wildlife and it makes it nice. And we want to help them with that. And so oftentimes if they don't have a plan and we, we're alerted, we can, especially you, you can like help them figure out where you can get them in. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these guys are new to it, so they don't know where to go, what to do. So we kind of make some phone calls and it's a, it, it helps everybody. I mean, it helps the tourism areas. It helps down to the wildlife conservation center, down to a major Marine down in Seward to go on their boats. I mean, it's just, it helps everybody going down the line all the way down to Cyrus and just doing the little trolley around yep. town. I yep. mean, it, it, uh, we all try to pass work to each other. And I think that's really part of that, um, that Alliance of tourism, uh, peeps working together yeah. to just like really put out this ambassador front for the visitors that are coming. Yeah. It's epic here in Alaska. You know, I think if you asked our HR department what they have to do to prepare for summer, they would have a completely different answer than we do. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a wildfire for them. It's, it's summertime so busy. It's just, you know, bringing everybody on, but you know, I mean, we've been very lucky keeping a good staff this year. We haven't had as much uh, losing people or our retention has been much better. And so they haven't had as work as hard in that area of doing the recruitment and doing the onboard training right now. So now they're just coming into Couple, this is really their season. This, this is, is their, season. their season where they're working their tail off, whereas January is kind of a shoulder, quieter month for us. And, um, and, and there's a lot of training that happens within that month. But this is like HR's, like we've got a bunch of people to get badged at the airport. We've got this, this credential that needs to be done. and all Physicals yes, that need to be done. And all the onboarding orientation and training and, and all of the checkpoints. So... It used we, to be so much easier. We used to be able to just call our friends and hire them and then get the paperwork done and do our little training that we did when we were only a 20 or 30 man company. And now that, you know, we're 220 to be almost close to 300 this year, it's a, it's a whole new world. It's a, yes. I always choke myself in saying that I, I, the hiring process, if I had to get hired, I don't know if I would get hired through our own company. <laughs> well, you can't get fired because I, you're the founder. Well, so that's, I can be replaced. Everybody's replaceable. So with, I, I think you one day you're hoping to be replaced. Amen. Amen. One day we look to both of us getting replaced and, and having a different role in the company. <laughs> well, uh, I can honestly tell you that there are people that are way smarter than me at operating business. And so I'm hoping to find one of those people so that, um, yes, one day we will be able to have more leisure. You'll see our podcast more on the road. We'll be in Hawaii. We'll be in our motor home. We'll there you go. That'll be the change. Trips and that'll be the change. You'll see some mics sitting on top of the uh, dashboards and it'll be a, uh, we'll show some videos where we're going and what we're doing. Yes. Yes. So you know, understanding what we have to get ready, tire changeovers. I mean, with a fleet our size, that's not a light thing. No. Especially since we're not doing that in house right now. We have the machines. It's just not the uh, the time as much right now. We're trying to get everything ready on the ground. So yeah, so a partnership with American Tire and those guys have been great really working with us. And uh, we have a great working relationship with them and we get everything down there and they make room for us. And yeah. it's been good. Yeah, I really appreciate the way that they're like so 
respectful of how our business is operating and they want to be helpful and just the connection with the manager and yeah, you know, Kevin's great down there. Kevin runs the whole entire place. Mark is our next door neighbor, so it works out really well. And We know where you live, Mark. And it's so funny is we go in there, and the other day I was in there, and I was dropping off vehicles, and I, I saw it was all the way down the line. I'm like, well, which way is the start and which way is the end? He goes, well, that's the end, and this is the start. And I saw a couple of our vehicles at the end, so I, as Kevin went back in the door, I switched them and put them in the front. And, God, you know, it was so crazy. Our cars got done so quickly, and he laughed at me. He goes, did you switch those around? I'm like, you know I did. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So it's nice that we do it, but we appreciate them. In fact, uh, this week we're buying them uh, Friday. We're buying them all lunch. So we appreciate our vendors sometimes. So when we go do things and they go above and beyond for us, we try to go and take care of the entire team. So yeah. we're going to have main event uh, doing their burger boxes. We got 12 burgers and fries and all the condiments going for them on Friday. You know, and I think that that particular message for all of you that are operating in business, like taking care of the people that take care of you goes way beyond just taking care of your employees. We're talking about the tire guy who is, that's a stressful time for them. Tire changeover is like the bread and butter of their business. It's this influx of business that comes and it's like, how can you relieve the pressure just a little bit and show them that that you appreciate them? And you know, when we come in, we have an emergent or something happens, they're more than willing to help us. And it's not because we're a good, one of their best customers, but also because we take care of their team and they know that we appreciate them. And then that's just a small appreciation, a couple of two, 300 bucks it costs us to go feed the whole entire team. And you, you look at the other ones that we just did too, it was a national 911 dispatcher week. And so we've bought all the dispatchers throughout their, uh, their each shifts, shift. each yep. shift, there's four shifts that we let them pick the restaurant and let them pick it and let them know we appreciate them. And, you know, the partnerships like that, you know, there's a lot of people that do it. I mean, uh, you know, uh, even all of our partners and guardian and life met everybody's sending candy and appreciate things that they do because it's a stressful job. So <clears throat> small things like that, you know, when you get all of the team texting you and saying how much they appreciate you guys yeah. did something so, so huge to them, but so small to us. So, well, I mean, I don't look at it like it's small because do you remember it's we a, got pizza small, from one of our carriers? Yeah, what I mean is like a small token. It, it, it for us to go out and spend two hundred dollars on pizzas yes, for them. I agree with or you doing on something that. Like that. It's not a huge. Uh, it's not a huge lift for us. It's yeah. uh, We we see that and we appreciate that. And we take care of it, and it's it's not even a second thought. That's what I mean. Small. I think huge for them to let them know the appreciation that we give to them. That we take the time to do it. In fact, we were in dinner the other night with the mayor and doing our fundraiser for them and they were texting me what they wanted for food in 15 minutes. And so I had to step out twice and go pay for it. (laughs) So you took care of it though. You know, I, it reminds me, uh, during COVID we did this like big cookie order at Lucy Mays, which if you haven't tried Lucy Mays cookies, they Uh, are amazing. Uh, what's the website? Uh, Lucy Mays.com L U C I M A E S.com. They're a little bakery in Chugiak and um, these cookies are just these sugar cookies with this icing on it. And uh, you can put little custom labels on it. And so I did this order for one of the ground carriers uh, at the Anchorage airport. And I made sure that I got everybody's name that's, that's working there. And also if there was any allergies. And there was one person who had a nut allergy. So he kind of stood out and I was able to razz him a little bit. Like, And we took care of the nut allergy guy. But the response was from their station manager was, we are loved. Like those were her words. We are loved. We can see you guys love us. And uh, I, I had their names put on every single one of those cookies and their little boxes. And it was there for them to enjoy on their shift. And um, But it was a big deal. We well, just did that for one of our banks too. I mean, yeah. we... Um had a great order. And so I came up with an idea that it's a newer customer of ours and they're one of our bigger banks and they hold some of our loans. And <clears throat> we did the same thing. We went to go pick up some of the board of directors and uh, it was really neat to go see those guys. And we made some box of cookies for them. And then Athena was very methodical in how she put them. She put their name on the front of it and then they had a box of extra cookies for them to give to away or whatever else it is. But every seat on the bus as they were in there had their names and everything else like that. And they they thought that was pretty impressive. They liked that. It was, uh, and you know, they were, we weren't even leaving the uh, hotel yet and they were already breaking them open to eat them. So they were getting ready for lunch. They were hungry. So they, this was a precursor for them to be able to have a little snack yeah. before they went and had their lunch. And you know, it, it works out well, but those small things just make a huge difference to your clients, especially new ones. And you're coming in brand new and doing something. Um, they, uh, they notice things like that. They're, they, you know, you're kind of on the, uh, you're kind of on the pedestal in the very beginning. You got to make sure you stay on the pedestal. You got to make sure that you're keeping that A. So, um, uh, 
I think we did a good job on that. I think it was a yeah, really good job. That that um you're gonna be hearing about that for a long time. And you know, that was something really easy where I just you know, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but like the 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 most um precious thing that somebody hears is their own name. And so if you can remember their name or you can bring up their name or you can show that you're knowing their name is something that's important to you adding their name to a label on on a cookie is a big deal and on these boxes it was just welcome aboard and their name that was it yeah well on the other side of the cookies it said thank you for your partnership and it and it said the name of the bank and then it said uh, uh, us and yep. because it's a new partnership that we have and we want them to know that we felt thankful for it we were very appreciative of the business and we wanted to show it and give them something nice as a treat. So I, I think it went over well. And, and, and we haven't done this. It's not the first time we've done this with customers either. We've done this with other customers and we've done this with hospitals when we started yep. the ambulance company and we really just wanted it. Our, our carriers that we do life flights for, I mean, we, we really try to show them that we care and we have it. And you know, it's, it can't be an everyday thing because it, it has an expense to it, but it definitely is a special occasion thing. Yeah. And you know, this is something where it's a local vendor with a made in Alaska label that we're able to partner with that is really accommodating when we have last minute orders and sometimes they can do the labeling or if we, we have something quick, like we can print the labels in the office and throw them on the cookies. And it is just, they're, they're such a gourmet item. It's nothing that you could buy in a store. It's absolutely got this like wonderful flavor of like gourmet and we're just really blessed to have um, identified people like that in the community that we can work with that yeah. can just help us to shine in front of our customers. Peppercinis does that. Main Event does that. I mean, we have a lot of different people. We've worked with Silk on bringing people and bringing big groups down there. I mean, it's just the local people that you can call and just say, hey, in the last minute, we got something going on. Can we make this happen? And, you know, <clears throat> if they can make it happen, they usually do. Yeah. And earlier... Uh, so I'm on the Women's Leadership Council for the National Limousine Association. It's just one of the areas that I give back to our industry. And they just had this, we were talking about networking and this this emphasis on like standing out. And we're in a world right now where handwritten notes are kind of not a thing. Like people sending text messages, people doing these personal things like giving out these, these little like cookie gifts. And... Um, like being intentional about what is something that stands out in your business that you can kind of like shine in front of your customers and make them feel special. So it, it was, it was really interesting. The handwritten card reactions, like we've gotten a couple of handwritten cards and it was like, I can't believe they wrote me a card. I was just the bus driver. They didn't yeah. know I was the owner, but I, I, I pulled a bus gig at the last minute for a very important customer and they gave me a thank you card. Yeah. It's kind of nice. And a little nice touches that they're doing on their side to let us know that we're appreciated also. Yeah. You know, one of the other things that we do too, and we did is a lot of malasavas. We did the, mm, uh, the donuts from, uh, wiki wikis. And that was another good place too, that we get the small ones and big ones and bring them out to people. And they're very popular. So, you know, lo teaming up with your local vendors and people to help you and, and setting up some, and, and they, you know, they were nice and they set up some special pricing for us and, take care of it because we were ordering quite a few boxes and it's just a good way to go into a meeting. Anytime you can go into a meeting and you can bring food or you can do something, guarantee that you'll see your team a little bit happier and the people that are you're serving, you know, because food for a lot of people is a fun thing and they like the different tastes and things like that. So uh, if you walk into a meeting and you uh, have uh, cookies or food or donuts or things like that at the appropriate time, it could give you another 10 minutes in front of everybody. It could yeah. you have a different lasting impression on somebody that you can do so well and you know and kind of being mindful of the food too like for instance we have a um, ceo at one of our hospitals who's gluten-free you wouldn't want to bring donuts and cookies to that meeting you'd want to be like mindful about that and so you can find out information around that just by asking a few quick questions about food allergies of who's going to be at the at the meeting. Yeah, we took a lunch in there and then we yeah. found out they had food in it, so we brought pizzas and then we made sure one of them was gluten-free. Yeah, but that's the sure intentionality that I'm yeah. talking about. If we'd have got there and everybody else could eat besides her, it probably wouldn't have been such a great... Uh, Not the meeting. boss couldn't eat anything? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I think she'd appreciate it. We brought it for her employees, but, you know, I mean, it, it's the intentionality of, of uh, definitely looking into your client. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. And, you know... Uh, even with our children, one of the things that I teach them is oh, that if you're... I met Sally when we go to eat. No, no. What, what I... What, absolutely. 
we go to eat. My wife has different dietary issues. My daughter does. My son will only eat like four things from the food group. And I am the, I am the catch all for the most part. As long as it's not fishy, I'm okay. But it's, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, our poor waitress has to look at this and just go through the whole entire menu. And I, 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 you know, I appreciate my wife and my daughter and everybody else that has allergies or they have food preferences. They do, but it is absolutely, uh, it is absolutely funny when we go do an order at a restaurant. You know, and honestly, I think that speaks to our region because we can go to other places in the world and they have items listed right on the menu. What's gluten-free, what's dairy-free, what's all of these things, what has peanuts in it. And Alaska is kind of more, you know, I mean, there are some rest. there's a couple restaurants that have GF on there or they have dairy or they have, they have sensitivity or allergy notations, but it's not like, like, when we went to Austin, oh my gosh, that was such good food. I have no idea what tacos I ate, but I don't think it was any real meat. I was a little bit, uh, I, was, I, I wasn't paying attention to the music. I'm like, oh, three tacos, that sounds great, or something like that, street tacos. You were at a vegetarian restaurant. It was, I, it was not. It was, you didn't uh, know. No, I had no idea. I bit into them. I'm like, well, this is interesting meat. And they're like, there's no meat here. I'm like, what do you mean there's no meat? <laughs> so, um, I my ate wife, so much on that trip. Oh, she it had was, doubles and desserts. I had dessert before <laughs> dinner one night. Yeah, it was she had so two, good. Two orders of dessert. Yeah, well, it was like a about that big. Thank God that there was a barbecue restaurant right around the corner from our uh, place, and we were able to get some some real food. But you had you ate so healthy that yeah. week we were in Austin because of all of the different options that we had out. Like normally, we it's it's a challenge sometimes um, when when you have food preferences, and I mean, all of our food is shipped in from the barge, and that's another piece of like. The community getting ready for tourism. We have an influx of stuff that is just coming. It is, it's crazy. All, all of the things that everybody needs to do to get ready for tourism. But for us, there we have some limited options. And so, what, yeah, it's kind of, Charlie looks really good when we go out to eat because we do have preferences. Well, they look good. I just, I, I can usually order off the menu. <laughs> You know, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was also like we talked a little bit about how BAC gets ready for tourism, but how do the Grimms get ready for tourism? I mean, how do we get ready for summer, really? Oh, well, we have a lake house, so yes. we're very excited about the lake house. So we're transitioning from snow machining and doing winter activities and all of our winter gear, taking up the closets and all the other stuff and starting to get that out and then starting to get ready for summer things. So we're starting to charge batteries for jet skis and we got boats and we got... We got a new boat. We got, we bought a very nice wake boat this year. We've been looking for a little bit, a couple of years. For, Charlie's been looking for a boat. Yes, for a couple of years, airplanes too. But um, anyway, so we've been looking for a that. boat and uh, we found a great deal. Thank you, Tom at uh, Berkshire. Um, found a great deal for us on a boat. And we bought it, was it in December, January? Something like that. It's yeah, it was about three or four months ago. <clears throat> we never even saw the boat besides the pictures, yeah. but we trusted Tom. We trusted the people that we knew and we had quite a few common friends, and so we were able to purchase it. So we got to pick it up last week, and uh, we got it at our garage town, and uh, we got to listen to the stereo. A funny story is, like, if you have never had a ski and a tea, um, we had no idea how to start it. You know, I mean, the boats are yes. usually pretty self-explanatory keys, things like this. So we get over there, and there's a start and stop button, and there's all these numbers. and We get in there, and nobody mentioned to us about a code. And so we're inside there, and we have the batteries on, and we're trying to... We're trying to play the we, stereo. We want to wanna stereo. know what the tunes sound like. We, we know the boat runs good, and we've seen some videos, but we want to hear what the stereo sounded like. So we were just in our... Of course, we didn't want to fire it up in the water, but no. so we're in there and we're trying to get it started and about 25 minutes into it. I called Tom at Berkshire. I'm like, this is going to sound like a stupid question. We've looked on YouTube and everything, but how do we start this boat? You know, how do we get the boat started? And he's like, do you got the code? I said, no. And he goes, it's not a stupid question, Charlie. He goes, it, uh, let me get you the code. And so then we text the owners and she sent it over and Tom sent it over shortly afterwards. We were able to turn it on. So we're excited. It's beautiful. It's like a burnt orange, uh, black. Um, it's got amazing interior, not a sh pair of shoes I've ever been into it. It's just very clean, very nice. So we're very blessed to be able to get this into our things. And we ordered some new boards already for it. So some of the preparation for us is we took off the tracks off the four wheelers. Yep. And so now we got summertime wheels on it and we're getting everything maintained and getting ready for it. We blew out the driveways with some blowers and we're blowing out that we'll put the, uh, deck furniture out this week and we'll get ready for all of our guests. We have yeah. lots of guests coming this summer. We have friends from Everywhere. all over coming up. Fourth of July, there'll probably be at least minimum of 25, 30 people at our place. In and out. Yeah. I mean, kids and adults. And it's like, uh, so if Fuel you. Fuel bill is going to be outrageous. I'm sure at least $1,000 that weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. A lot of fuel. 
man, thank you for Berkshire for having us be able to get fuel. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's the one Marina that we're able to get fuel at. And, you know, I was thinking it's transitioning from summer to winter might just be like as simple as, Oh, well, we're just going to move the snow machines out and put, and, and put the, the boats in. And it's like, there's a lot of stuff. You have a lot of stuff. And part of it is because you're such a wonderful host for the people that are coming. Like one of the things that you're so conscientious about is like, do we have room for everybody? Can, okay. can everybody um, that wants to come see us, do they have something that they can do and use? Yeah. Well, I mean, you come to a place that everything's so nice and you want to go out in the water and you want to go do something. So we want to be able to have toys for it and we want to be able to enjoy it with our friends and things like that too. So you know, we have seven jet skis. We have a wake boat, we have a pontoon boat, and we have another lake boat that's a little runaround, and that'll probably turn into the kids' lake boat. And uh, you know, what do we have uh, three side by sides, and we have four four wheelers. Um, so I mean, after I'm, this week's auction, we're only gonna have four four wheelers. No, I think we, we we probably have a few more. I don't think they made them all in the auction. Okay. Yet, so. But anyways, yeah, just lots of toys. But, you know, the whole idea for us is to go out there and have fun and have our fun with our friends and our family. So, I mean, they get to enjoy it and everybody else does too. So it makes it a fun, fun place. You know, and something that the Lake House has really brought has been, you have always been, I, when we were younger, I, I felt like you were far more generous with our stuff than I was because I was like, we worked really hard to get this and then we're going to loan it out and somebody's going to break it, you know, but then as I got older and more mature, I realized, oh my gosh, we'll just fix it. It'll be fine. And so it got to the (coughs) point to where your generosity was so much that we started acquiring all of these extra things to share with others because we've been blessed and now we're sharing and so I had to develop a borrow calendar. Yeah. So did. that I knew where Vans, all this cars, stuff was SUVs. and he knew because I'm like, hey, I don't when you have a, a bunch of cars, especially and you notice that one of them is gone, it might take a little while. Yeah. And sometimes bad things happen and people will take stuff. And so I'm like, we need to keep track of where it's at and when it's supposed to come back, especially when we were like loaning out a car and or then home. <laughs> and we, we didn't know like, oh, my gosh, what did I tell so and so? So that became a useful tool. Yeah. You know, that that's kind of been a little bit less. I mean, we have some fr- few friends that come out and borrow vehicles. We had Becky last year came out and borrowed three or four vans and our lake house and then our Range Rover and yeah. a bunch of other things. They had a quite of a group. I think it was 22 people that came up and visited and, you know, Becky's been a good friend of ours and Becky from Boston. Yep. And uh, so it was, uh, it was nice to be able to see them, but it's nice to be able to have the extra stuff. And you know, some of this stuff has been old retired stuff that we we don't use in our fleet anymore. So we've kept an extra couple, 12 or 15 passenger vans because people come up with families yeah. and, you know, uh, rental car agencies. And there are partners also that, you know, that sometimes we can't even get vehicles from them. Yeah. They're so expensive. So Because summertime in Alaska, everybody's booked. Yeah. Hotels. I mean, you know, running four ninety nine to seven ninety nine a night to get up here. I mean, it's, it's expensive during the summertime because we're such a hot topic right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but no difference if you go to Hawaii during the peak of the season there That's too. True. It's it's expensive to get that. It's everybody's... Uh, everybody's trying to make their uh, their living in their special times. They have higher prices. So we try to make it a little bit easier on it. Uh, we have GR and Maria coming up this again this year. This will be their fourth time, I think, coming up, fourth or fifth time. Yeah. So they just called us last night and said they're going to be up in July. And so we'll have them for there. And then we'll have the Tangies kids up for July. And yep. then we'll Where have the, the Tangies right after July. And then we'll have our kids and our friends and all the mom gremlins. and my cousin Michael. And yeah, it'll, be a, it'll be a party. And we, we'll be hosting a lot of food and... It'll be a fun week. You know, but something um, something that I didn't realize when when I was younger in this generosity piece, and I don't know if you did or not, but... And I don't like, want to say we're just, I'm just generosity. You're generosity too. We both have, we both fall into that category. You, you do it just as much. I mean, you'll make 200 uh, ice wedge lettuce uh, roll wraps or something like that where everybody enjoys them and you'll spend hours upon hours, you know, taking your time to make food and do things and it's our stuff. So we're letting them borrow our stuff. Well, what I mean by that is that you have the ability to kind of think about, Oh, I I can help you in that area or I can help you in that area. My generosity is in other areas, which probably makes us a good team because I think of this side and then you think of that side. Uh, But really when there are some people that we've invited up to the lake house that 
they wouldn't have had that experience. Otherwise, they may never have that experience. And to be able to uh, have, be able to go with a ride on their, with their significant other, uh, to be able to like spend some extra time with maybe their teenage kid or, I mean, we've had all kinds of guests that have come up. Yeah, I mean, joined us for the summer. <clears throat> we've had employees come up. We've had people come yeah. up too, and you know, they were up there at the lake. And you know, we're always more than welcome if uh, people are more than welcome to come up. As we have room and things coming up there, it's always stop by if you ever come by. And we're there. You'll see the blue lights going down the. Uh, oh yes, the these, blue lights. The blue lights. I always like a system that let people know we're there. So during when we're there, we down our porch way. We have a long, long uh, walkway to our porch. There's blue lights. So when people go a little wide around the. Uh, lake if they know the lights are on even day or night that we're there and that means you can stop by and come up and say hi and then when we're not there we have them off <clears throat> so a little bit of a challenge in our docking area to bring everybody else's boats over there and sometimes so we have extra space on our dock so but they want to make sure that we're there and be able to hang out with them well and if you have seen the grim dock which i will get a picture of the green dock or the grim dock it is ridiculous it is great when we have almost every square inch of that being used. Well, and I remember it was only going to be three pieces. It was. There was three of these pieces, and there was three of those pieces, and it was five <laughs> XC docks, and it was the other one there too. It was a it was a combination of a bunch of pieces. That when you do three times three times three, then that makes sense, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's three by three by three divided yeah. by three equals yeah. three. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. I would say right now we're probably in in the space where we've got to haul out snow machine gear out of the mudroom. We're going to haul in the thousand life vests that we own yeah, for all the little might people. Even need more now because now we got a whole other boat. Yeah, well, we got a lot. We got a lot already. We got sixteen more life vests that we have to put on that boat to uh, to be uh, certified. Plus, that's true. Fire extinguishers, but everything. So, we'll be hitting up Cabela's again. Cabela's will be getting a big order of life vests because we have them for our pontoon boat. We have them for that one too, and yep. then we have the other small boat. So, it's a lot of safety things, but that's the whole other thing is being safe. You know, and one of the pieces too that I love about the Lake House doesn't just bring connectivity and this like. Um, this op- opportunity for us to be together as a family, but it also teaches our children that we have things that we need to take care of. And we're also teaching our grandchildren that this is the things that we get to use, but we have to take care of them. And so it's not a question of like, oh, you have to go do this. It's like we get to go like make sure that the watercrafts are locked up and we get to make sure that the four wheelers are put away and they're clean for the next time that we use them. So our son Charlie is so excellent at that. I he is. Our daughter Audra, she's good about driving them. <laughs> she's and breaking them so, and breaking them. But she uh, she helps when she's told to go do it. But Charlie's really good about making sure everything's locked up yes. and it's cinched up and the covers are on. And Audra will go help her help him and then put the machines away and make sure everything's good to go and the keys are put up. So he's got that great sense about it. He's good at parking things and taking it out. So. We feel good once he gets his license that he'll be a good driver also. Yeah. Yeah. I do appreciate that about our kids is that they are understanding. And, you know, with our grandkids getting older, like our grandson is joining us this weekend and he's nine. He'll be 10 this year and, and teaching him, Hey, this is, this is our stuff that we take care of so that we can use it again and again and again. Uh, He's one of the first ones that wrecked our snow machine. That was not his fault. That That was, was, that was, that was his supervision. Our other son, Orion. (laughs) <laughs> full speed <laughs> yeah so now you have to tell the story of the snow machines and what happened oh geez we were at uh i don't even know where we we're at we were, we were telling ryan we bought these two small snow machines but they had some race motors they were like it. 120s with the race 240 with the hyped up motors and little no little idea. snow machines that we bought for Two, the like grandkids 40 miles an hour i mean they were fast and so we bought these things because we want to have something for the grandkids to be able to ride in and so we got it there and we were tinkering around with it and we had a Ryan and we said, Hey, whatever you do, don't let him do full speed, you know, try to figure out what he's going to do. And so he we told him to on put it. the kid on the lake. There's yeah. nothing to hit on the lake. Like so that's the beauty to do it right there. And he took out one of our benches. So it was bolted down to the ground uh, at our lake house. And it was like, are you kidding me? And he didn't even say anything to me. My neighbors called me up right away. And then we looked on the video cameras. We watched it and said, Hey, something you want to tell me? He's like, how'd you find out already? And that's like the neighbors called us. And so they had this thing wind out and crash and hit it and, 
Lucky it didn't do a ton of damage, but it was just like, I think it scared Bo. It scared him to the point to where he didn't want to get on a snow machine for like another year yeah. after that. Well, because so like, like, he got yelled at and some other things happened and, you know, there was just this shock and scare. But that was a long time ago. That was like four or five yeah. years ago. So. Yeah, he's he's getting better. He'll ride with me on the watercrafts and the snow machines. Yeah. But he's at that age now where he's um, his confidence needs to needs to grow a little bit. So, well... The wonderful part about being in Alaska in the summertime, I think, is the sun is 20 up. Twenty hours, twenty hours, twenty of hours a day. I love the sun. I, I just, I, I love that feeling when the sun is on your face, and it's just oh, so nice. And so that's one of my favorite things. And then, of course, the busyness. The, um, you just get so much done because there's so much daylight, and there's so much variety going on. And I just like the variety of, of the busyness of work and it's like everybody kind of tightens up the ship when we're busy and the other things that were, were like inconveniences nobody even mentions anymore well, because we're so busy because yeah. we stay busy and so we don't have time for our mind to wander and what we're not doing what we could be doing and so and, so and what we it. like what we don't like about yeah, this scenario and so that is probably one of the things that I really appreciate about tourism in in the summertime is that it just really the team gets super focused yeah. on what the purpose is. Yeah, it's good energy. So this is going to be an, uh, an awesome summer. And if you haven't had a chance to visit Alaska, or if you are in Alaska and you haven't experienced the full tourism experience, then definitely make this year the year that you're joining us. Or if you're bored of your state and you want a great job, and you want to come work for a place that's all year round business, we can yeah. take you on too. Yep. Yep, we're always looking for awesome team members. So thank you guys for joining us. Again, thank you. Bye. Bye.